In this video, we're going to talk about the flight guidance panel, or what a lot of people call the autopilot. And to be honest, I've called it that myself. If you press a button on the flight guidance panel, it moves the flight director and the autopilot follows the flight director. And if you press a button up here, expect to see something over here. This is the flight mode enunciator. It's telling us what modes we are currently in. There's the approach active field, lateral or left and right fields, like nav or heading, or even approach because that will turn the airplane left and right as well. Next is the autopilot and yaw damper field. This will tell us when the autopilot or yaw damper is on. It also tells us which side is controlling the autopilot. In this case, the arrow is pointing to the left, so the pilot side is controlling the autopilot. And last of all, vertical field modes. Any vertical field that we can select will go here. This display will display two different colors, green and white. If the item is green, that means it's active, it's currently being used. If it's white, that means it's armed. The autopilot or flight director is looking for that item, and when it finds it, it will move up and turn green. An example of this is when you select approach, glide slope is white. When the glide slope captures, it turns green, and then it's followed. So what I'm going to do in this video is demonstrate each mode on the panel. I'm also going to explain a little bit more about VNAV and some messages you might see. And also I'm going to throw in angle of attack. Angle of attack is displayed in two places in the CJ4. I'm going to tell when each of those are displayed and what it means and how do you use it. Here we are on the takeoff roll. Look at where the flight director is at. I got it there by pressing one button, the go around button. That pitches the flight director up 9 degrees and puts the airplane in roll mode, which is basically wings level because it doesn't have any lateral information, so it just goes to roll mode. But I also did select heading earlier so you can see that it now says heading mode. And then once the autopilot's turned on, you can see the aircraft pitch down and meet the command bars. And command bars and flight director are the same thing, but that reiterates the autopilot follows the flight director. Look at our vertical field. It says takeoff. And as you can see, we had 2,000 feet set and it flew right through it. And that's normal, it's going to. We needed to give it an additional vertical mode to tell it what to do. So we can pre select an altitude, press vertical speed, then it will level off at that altitude, altitude. like we're doing right now. And if we were to press vertical speed again while we're in vertical speed mode, vertical speed will, or VS will go away and become pitch. Then we're just going to climb at a given pitch attitude, whatever we select by using the wheel here. So now the airplane's going to climb at the rate we select. It's looking for that rate to maintain. The next thing it's looking for right now is the altitude, 7800. This display also shows our current rate of descent when we're descending. The number goes down here to the bottom of the tape. When we're climbing, it goes to the top. And the rate we've selected is over here. Another vertical mode we can use for climbing or descending is FLC, or flight level change. Simply put, flight level change will maintain an airspeed in the climb or descent, and then you get whatever vertical speed the airplane will perform at under those given conditions. So for example, at full power, Close to sea level, you might get three or 4,000 feet a minute, but at 40,000 feet, you might only get 1,000 feet a minute, but you might be climbing at the identical indicated airspeed in both conditions. When we select flight level change, we see a few indications. We get an airspeed bug, the number that the airspeed bug is at, and we see it on the flight mode enunciator, the speed we've selected. Then we also see FLC or flight level change active because that's what the flight director is doing right now. And to use flight level change, push the FLC mode button and then turn this knob to select the speed that you want. You can change between indicated airspeed and mock speed in flight level change. And to do that, push the button on the center of the knob. Indicated airspeed used at altitudes generally below 30,000 feet. Above 30,000 feet, usually we climb at a mock speed. The first lateral mode that we come to is the nav button. 
Nav mode can follow the FMS. When it does so, we have pink needles, or it can follow a VOR or a localizer. When it's on those, we have green needles. In Flight Sim 2020, when a course is entered and you press Nav, it will intercept on a 45 degree angle. I've taken Brickyard, I stuck it behind us in blue, and the next fix is Terre Haute. It's going to intercept that course. And you can see as it starts to roll wings level, we're intercepting on a 45 degree angle. And it'll maintain this heading until that course intercepts, then it would start to turn back to the left and follow the course. But we can guess what that looks like and pretty much everybody's probably seen that done. So we're going to skip ahead and switch sources to switch sources. We're going to press the nav button right there. Now you can see we're in VOR1. You can press it again and go to VOR2. To tune the VOR, spin the course knob until the needle centers. And you can see we have a green needle. When we're on a VOR or a localizer, we have a green needle, as we mentioned earlier. And this is also the working title mod. To input a frequency for VOR1, you would go to the tune page and put it in nav1. And for VOR2, you would go tune page, put it in nav2. The next lateral mode we have is heading. To use heading, we can spin the heading bug, then press the heading button, or you can press the heading button and then spin the knob. It doesn't really matter. But remember when heading is pressed, when you press a button over here, you'll see a message over here. So in this case, we're going to see heading, HDG. And when you're pressing heading, don't go beyond 180 degrees behind you or to the, beyond the six o'clock position. If you do, like in this case, the airplane's turning to the right, you go beyond 180, the aircraft's gonna start to turn to the left because it's gonna say, oh, we can get to that heading, it's quicker to go this way and it'll turn the opposite direction. And in real life, some autopilots are like that, but some of them don't do that. If you turn it to the right, say you turn it to the right 270 degrees, it'll turn to the right all the way around. It won't turn and go left when it gets past the six o'clock position. The heading button can also be centered. Just press the button on the heading knob and that will center the heading bug to the, your current heading. Next is the approach button. What this is going to do is follow a localizer or a course and then follow a glide slope or a glide path down to an altitude. But it will be an altitude that you do something at, not the airplane. The airplane won't do anything at that altitude at the decision height. So in this case, the localizer and glide slope are being followed. We had pressed the approach button prior to seeing the green GS or glide slope indication. It was white when it captured or centered. Then it moved up and turned to a green glide slope. Here the airplane would just keep flying until it hits the ground. If we wanted to go to 3000, which is set in the altitude selector, we would have to actually select a vertical mode. Here's another time we would use the approach mode when we're doing a GPS approach to LPV minimums. So this one's going to hold an altitude. It's got V pitch active and GP or glide path is armed. It's looking for the glide path and that glide path comes down. It'll do what it just did. It'll go to VGP. And just like an ILS, when the glide slope is captured in VGP, it's not going to look at the altitude selector at all it's going to take it straight to the runway. I had a sim instructor a while back tell me VGP is vertical ground pound. It's going to pound the airplane into the ground unless you do something at the decision height. And one reason it does that is it allows you to set the missed approach altitude. So even if you're going through the missed approach altitude, you can still set it and the airplane's not going to level off. And remember, like in this case, you're doing a GPS approach. You want pink needles. If you're doing a localizer or an ILS, you want green needles, so you would need to press the nav button and change the source to the appropriate source that you're using. And VGP does not actually mean vertical ground pound, it means vertical glide path. Autopilot. Next is VNAV, or vertical navigation. What vertical navigation is going to do is make sure you reach each altitude constraint on your flight plane in the FMS. This would be used the most on an arrival or on an approach with multiple step downs. So if you're on an arrival and you hear the words 
clear to descend via, you would put in the bottom altitude or the last altitude on the arrival and then hit VNAV. So another thing for VNAV to work correctly, just like an ILS catching the glide slope, you need to catch it from below. So if the VNAV deviation pointer is at the bottom of the indicator, you're not going to capture it. The airplane's just going to keep on flying. The glide path that it wants to capture, it's below it. It can't see it. And when that happens, you may get a no path indication on the flight mode enunciator. You can see it in white. So here's a crude drawing of what that might look like. A is the airplane. The red rectangle is the top and bottom of the indicator or the path. And fix is the fix that it's drawing that 3 degree glide path from. So we're above it, we'd have to descend down to get to it. So in this case, we're descending a little over 4,000 feet a minute. And as we get closer to the 3 degree glide path that's set in, it's going to go to path, which it did right there. And then eventually, once we start to get closer to it, that path is going to move up to the top and become green. So what that's telling us in white, it's armed. It's just looking for that path. There, it's captured it. Now it can see it. You can see the VNAV deviation indicator starting to come up. That means we're descending onto it. We're descending onto the middle of that three degree glide path. And why, th why is it three degrees? Well, it says it right here. Another component of doing a VNAV arrival is the flight plan target altitude. That's the number in pink above the vertical speed. It's like a dog chasing a tennis ball. That dog's not going to do anything until it gets that tennis ball. VNAV's the same thing. It's looking for that 5,000 feet. It's not going to go to 2100. It's going to go to that 5,000 feet. That's what it wants to do next. But the pink altitude is a soft altitude. It's going to hit that one unless the pre-select altitude is higher. And the pre-select altitude will always win. Like we said earlier, we set the bottom altitude. In this case, we're doing an approach. The bottom altitude is 2100. I've set 2100. It's going to hit all the step downs, but it's going to stop and not go lower than 2100 feet. There are times when using VNAV that it won't descend the whole time. Like on an arrival, there might be a great distance between two points with crossing altitudes. So it may make the first level off and stop descending. It'll fly level. And it'll be looking for that 3 degree glide path. And when it hits that, then it'll start down. And you'll know when it's going to descend. You'll see TOD or top of descent in front of you. When you get close to the top of descent, you'll also get the vertical deviation display. And that may seem like a lot. It's not really. But I do plan to do a, another video on an arrival. I've actually got one recorded. I just have to narrate it. But that's going to be coming in the future. The next mode we have is half bank. Half bank just prevents the airplane from turning more than 15 degrees of bank. It's normally used for single engine operations and also at higher altitudes. Most airplanes will automatically turn half bank on around um, 30,000 feet plus or minus a few thousand feet. This one does not do it automatically. When half bank is selected, it will also show a small white arc up here on the attitude indicator right there. And believe it or not, like everything in aviation, that has a proper name. And that is called a half bank arc. Another button we're gonna talk about, but I'm not gonna show it in this video, is the BC or the back course button. I do have a TBM 930 localizer back course video, and it would be the exact same concept in this airplane. The next button, we see it a lot, but we don't really press it a lot, is the ALT or altitude button. And that is altitude hold. It will hold the current altitude where you press that button. So right there, I pressed it at 5,500. The autopilot leveled off at 5,500 feet. And there's two modes we haven't really touched on a lot so far. First is AP or autopilot transfer. For example, if the pilot's primary flight display failed, you could hit the autopilot transfer and use the information off of the co-pilot side. And there are more times when you could use that, but it doesn't work in Flight Sim 2020, so I'll save you guys the time. The other button is the yaw damper button. And the yaw damper simply dampens yaw and provides turn coordination. And yaw damp should also be turned off for takeoff and landing. And last of all is the angle of attack. 
The angle of attack indexer up by the window comes on when the gear is down. Then we have a more precise angle of attack indicator to the left of the airspeed, which comes down when flaps are in the landing or the 35 degree position. These indicators are for reference. The one with the green circle on it, the indexer by the window, that green circle means you're at approximately 0.6 AOA. If the orange arrow is pointing up, it wants you to raise the nose and increase the angle of attack. If the arrow is pointing down, it wants you to lower the nose and decrease the angle of attack so that you have just that green circle. Then you have the angle of attack on the left by the airspeed, and that one tells us our precise angle of attack. You get the stick shaker at approximately 0.8 AOA. That just tells you you're approaching the stall, that you need to do something like lower the nose, add power, both. Or in this case, if you get to 1.0 AOA, that means you've exceeded the critical angle of attack and the wing is actually stalling. As you can see there, the nose is dropping rapidly. That is a full stall. So all these different angle of attacks, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1.0, what does that actually mean to us in a practical way? When we calculate REF or VREF, it's actually a safety speed. That's the stall speed of the airplane plus 30% of that speed. So in a given configuration, if the airplane stalled at 100 knots, your REF speed would be 130. And in these types of airplanes, not all, but most of these airplanes like this, when you are on ref, that is 0.6 AOA. So here we're holding ref, and you can see the AOA indicator to the left, and it's at 0.6. You can also see the indexer up by the window. It's got the green circle, which is another indication we're near 0.6 AOA. So this would come in handy for some reason. The speeds aren't set. If you're at a different configuration or an emergency situation where you need to get back on the ground, you don't have time to compute it you have these as a backup to keep you on ref for any given configuration. And if you want to learn more about V-Speeds, I do have a V-Speed video if you go to my channel page and then video tab. There is a video called V-Speeds Explained. It will explain most V-Speeds that you're going to encounter in Flight Sim 2020. And that's all I have for this video. As always, if you have a question, do not hesitate to ask. It's nobody's being a pain by asking questions. I encourage it. I appreciate questions. If you have any comments or video suggestions, feel free to give those too. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.